Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shotgrass, and in today's video, we have another keyboard comparison, this time between the Yamaha P515 and the Korg SV2. While both of these instruments are kind of marketed towards a different sector of the market, um, and they're really meant for two different audiences, I thought I'd still do a comparison between them, because I think it will be interesting to see the differences and the similarities between the Korg SV2, which is designed to emulate vintage electric pianos and the P515, which is a more acoustic piano-based instrument that also features a few of the same types of sounds. They have different visual appearances, and there's many other things that separate them, but they are also in the same price bracket as well. Now, the SV2 I have here is the S variant, which has speakers, so it's called the SV288S, and there's a couple of other variant names for it. But basically, this version is white, it has the speakers in the back here, and it's a bit more expensive, so in certain areas it probably would be more than the P515. However, the base model SV2, whether that's the 73 key or the 88 key model that's black and doesn't have any speakers, would definitely be in the same price range as the P515. So in today's video, we're going to be checking these out and seeing some of the differences and some of the similarities and trying to figure out which one is better, if there even is a winner. Before I get into the playing of these two instruments, which is going to be a lot of fun, by the way, these are two of my favorite digital pianos in this price point, I do want to talk about some of the physical differences between the two, and clearly there are many physical differences. The P515 has a very flat, a very modern appearance, and I do like it a lot. It's very, I mean, flat is the best way to describe it. The front is flat, the top is flat, the sides are pretty flat, and it just is a very straight, boxy-shaped keyboard, and I do like the shape of it. The SV2 has, like, the almost the exact opposite approach. It's very round, it's very bulbous, it's very soft-looking, and it's really interesting to look at as well. The round speaker grills in the back and the cream white color of the SV2S also make make it look even more interesting. So the SV2S, I think, if you're looking for a piano that's going to make you stand out on stage and look special, the SV2 definitely will. The P515 has a very professional, very calm air about it. You're not going to stand out and look crazy up on stage with it. You'll just look very professional and very normal. The SV2S is for somebody who wants to stand out and be a bit special, which I think is fantastic. A couple of the other physical differences between these two digital pianos would be the music desks. This isn't terribly important for everyone, as some people in the comments have said, but it's pretty important to me when I'm usually practicing with a digital piano, when they're not stacked like this, I'm usually using a music desk if I'm practicing on them. And so this is a music desk for the Korg. Uh, it's pretty basic, it does do the job. Um, it it's got a little bit of flex to it, but honestly, I haven't had any issues with it. The only problem with it is that it always could be longer. I'd love to see a stage piano that has the option to have a full-length music desk or something like that, but as some people have pointed out, more and more people are using iPads and tablets for music anyway, so perhaps the days of long music desks is coming to an end. Who knows? However, I think Yamaha does still kind of hold with that traditional approach, because this here is the music desk for Yamaha's. Now I say traditional and it's a completely clear plexiglass thing, but what I wanted to point out here is that it's a lot wider than the Korg. If, and since it's transparent, I can just do this and you can see here that the Yamaha's definitely is a lot wider than the Korg's music desk, which is also nice. The build quality overall of the Yamaha's is a bit higher as well. I do wanna say that since this is acrylic or some sort of plastic, it eventually will get scratches on it, unfortunately. But, especially if I do that with it, but the bottom of it actually seems to be metal and it's cold to the touch, so that's pretty cool as well. So that's Yamaha's music desk. It definitely looks interesting and unique and modern once again. It would go somewhere right around here. So that's what that would look like up there on the P515. It's at an angle, so it looks weird, but the style of it goes pretty well with the keyboard. Something else there's a difference with between these two digital pianos is the pedal units. Let me grab those as well and briefly mention those. While, to be fair, not everyone will be using a music desk, especially up on stage, I think we can all agree that the pedal unit is a very important aspect of a digital piano, especially one like these. This is Korg's pedal unit, and it does do the job. I do think it could use some improvements, though. I think the overall build quality could be higher, and the feet on the bottom, I think, should be made of rubber and not foam. There are two small rubber pads here, but I'm not even convinced they do anything at all. The Korg pedal unit really likes to slide across the floor as you play it on virtually every surface I've put it on even carpet to some degree. Um, it does have this weird notch in the background also. There's a spider. Shoo. 
Um, <laughs> it does have this notch in the back that I think is meant to go with some sort of stand, which would help lock it in place. But honestly, I think the Korg pedal unit, especially for this price point for the SV2S in particular, I think the Korg pedal unit could serve to have an upgrade at some point. It does do the job though and does work perfectly fine. After a couple years of use though, you will eventually start to develop some squeaks with it, which probably isn't unique to the Korg pedal alone. This here is Yamaha's pedal. It's the FC4A and I think you can already tell that it is a bit of a difference. There's no strange notch in the back and also the underside of it is solid metal with two giant rubber feet on it. Um, these rubber feet do a phenomenal job of sticking to the ground and it doesn't wander at all. It doesn't move at all. It's absolutely amazing. Amazing. The feel of it's just higher quality and it has a more springy feel, sort of like what you might find in a real piano that has a bit of more resistive touch when you push your foot down at it compared to here. That's not a super important aspect, but it is something I did notice. So between the two, I definitely prefer Yamaha's foot pedal. Like I said, Korg's does the job, but could always use some improvement. The final physical difference between these two that I wanted to talk about is the user interface, which is radically different on both of them. What they do both have in common, though, is that the user interfaces are very easy to use for both of them. Yamaha has gone for a more modern approach with a screen and buttons, whereas Cory has gone for a more retro vintage feel with actual physical tactile knobs that you turn and push, which is pretty cool. That's even in the name SV stands for stage vintage, and both the SV1 and the SV2 have gone for this almost like a 1970s type of appearance with these knobs that are very similar to those found on 70s synths and things like that. So it's a screenless kind of I don't want to say antiquated because it's not antiquated. It still works perfectly fine in 2020, but it's a it's a it's a user interface and an appearance that dates back to a previous time. Whereas the user interface up here on the Yamaha fits in perfectly well with these times. I think the screen, if we're talking about modern day, you know, the screen always could be a bit bigger and higher resolution, but it's perfectly fine on here on the P515. Again, it's very easy to use and select sounds. You just hit the sound buttons over here and then use the arrow keys to select which sound you want. The P515 has a built-in metronome and a rhythm as well. The SV2 unfortunately doesn't do that. The P515 also has a built-in recorder, which is great. The SV2 also doesn't do that, at least not in the actual physical features of the instrument. And the Yamaha also has a demo sound as well, and this also has a demo feature too. Um, the P515 has a reverb that you can toggle on and off as well as change the reverb type. You can also EQ the sound, you can do a sound boost up here, and you can also easily dual and split sounds right in the instrument itself, which is something you cannot do with the Korg SV2. You have to use Korg's online editor on the computer to be able to layer and split your own sounds. You can then write those sounds to a favorite bank within the instrument and then pull them up at any time with the instrument itself at a later time. The SV2, though, has a lot of different effects and a lot of different reverbs that you can apply to the sound by itself. So you can you have a lot more control over the sound with the SV2 than you do with the P515. For example, some of the sounds in the P515 have a pre-programmed auto pan or a pre-programmed phaser that sounds really nice, but I haven't found a way to be able to turn it on, off or on, at least through the instrument itself. Yamaha, I believe, also has a computer or a iPhone editor that you can use. I think it's on iOS for Yamaha to tweak and alter the sounds. But for the Korg SV2, um, the things you have here is you have an EQ, which you can turn on and off and use these knobs to turn on and off the EQ. You have a pre-effex, which has compressors, treble boost, tr uh, vibrato, tremolo, and other such sounds. You also have an amp simulator, which simulates vintage styles of amps. Then you also have a second modulation effects tab over here for phasers, choruses, and a couple of other various effects. And then down here, you also have your ambient section, which is for reverb and delays. You also have the ability to hit the touch button down here and change the touch sensitivity of the sound, which can provide a much punchier, brighter, or a more mellow, soft tone, depending on what you're going for. So there's a lot of different ways to change and tweak the sounds of the SV2, which is one of the things I love about it. A lot of the sounds of the P515 are pretty good, and so you wouldn't really want to tweak them, but if you did want to tweak them, built into the instrument, the P515 doesn't really have that ability. You can change the reverb and EQ it, but that's about it. Let's try out the acoustic piano sounds now of the P515 and the SV2. Now, an interesting thing to note is that when you boot up the SV2, it doesn't default to an acoustic piano sound like virtually everything else on the market. It instead defaults to a Fender Rhodes sound. So clearly the goal of the SV2 isn't so much to be an acoustic piano instrument, but more to be an electronic piano instrument like a Fender Rhodes or a Wurlitzer to give that vintage feel. 
However, the SV2 does actually have two categories of the instrument, each with 12 sounds dedicated to the sound of the acoustic piano. In the first piano category, there's four different basic variations of a grand piano. The first one is a German grand, the second is an Italian grand, the third is a Japanese grand, and the fourth is an Austrian grand. What I'm going to do to keep the comparison as fair as possible is use the Japanese grand. In the case of the Korg SV2, it's not super important because honestly, the Italian grand doesn't sound like a fat and the Austrian Grand doesn't sound like a Busendorfer, but just to keep everybody happy, I will use the Japanese Grand sample when comparing it, at least here at first, to the CFX, which is a Japanese-made piano from Yamaha. So let's see how these two compare and what they sound like on the SV2 versus the P515. So there's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Japanese Grand, a sample of the SV2 versus the CFX Grand on the Yamaha P515. And as you can hear, there are some differences. Now the overall tone of the piano are actually pretty similar. You, They do have some similarities. I mean, obviously they're both pianos, so they both sound like pianos and they do have some similarities, but they also do have some differences as well. One of the chief differences I'm noticing, and this is kind of a common theme with the SV2, is that the sounds of the acoustic pianos, and it's not only the Japanese Grand, the German Grand especially is this way. Um, the They're very mellow and very soft and very toned down. You can kind of fix some of this with the EQ um, of the the SV2. You can make them brighter and sound a little bit more punchy, but they still sound a bit more sterile and a little bit less alive than the sounds of 
for example, the P515 in this comparison. What exactly is causing that? I'm not sure. Perhaps it's a little better. It's a better simulation of sympathetic resonance for the P515. Something is making it sound a little bit more lively than the sound of the SV2. The other thing that definitely is different is the clarity of the SV2 samples, especially down here in the low bass. That's why I was playing that low E major chord down here with the low octave to, and then on the P515 as well to show you that the P515 is a lot more clearer. You can almost separate every single note when you're playing low triads down here. On the SV2, they just kind of all lump together and they sound okay, but they sound like a smaller, dirtier sounding piano than the P515. This isn't to say that the piano sounds of the SV2 are terrible. By all means, they're actually pretty decent, and especially if you threw them into a mix, you probably might not even be able to tell they were even a fake piano. If you had 30 other instruments going and you just could hear a note or two of the piano in the background, you wouldn't be any the wiser. But by itself, you definitely can hear a lot of differences between the two, and I thought I would discuss some of those. Now, out of curiosity, I'm going to go to my favorite piano sample on the SV2, at least that I found so far, which is the uh, B1 variant in the first piano category. So you go to the first sound, you press the sound button once, or the variation button to make the light green. And this is my favorite piano variation of the SV2. It's a variation of the German Grand, and it sounds a bit more alive, and it has a more complex sound than some of the other samples of the SV2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the CFX Grand and just compare these two now and see how they sound. Obviously there will be differences, but we'll just see what those are. So definitely you can hear a difference there. That piano sound on the SV2, even though I really like the tone of it, it still just sounds a bit more, a little more plain than the sound of the CFX Concert Grand, which is an acoustic piano that many people say sounds plain. So the SV2 sounds more plain than the CFX Grand, which honestly I love the piano samples up here on the P515. And I do like the piano samples down here on the SV2. I like what Korg has tried to do. They've tried to create, and they have succeeded in this, They've created a series of digital piano samples that are warm and mellow, which isn't something you see all that often. Um, but I think that there's still a few crucial things missing, and I'm not even exactly sure what they are. It's just when I play the SV2 piano sounds, the acoustic pianos, there's just something missing there that is present on an instrument such as this that gives this the leading edge. 
It's not the mellowness of the SV2 tones, though, that make me dislike them. I really like the sound of a mellow piano, and that's why the Busendorfer sample of the P515 is one of my favorite digital piano samples that I have found so far. So what I'm going to do here, to make the comparison fair once again, is go to sound number four, which is, according to Korg, an Austrian piano. Now, in my opinion, this... Austrian piano on the SV2 sounds nothing at all like a Busendorfer, and if anything, it reminds me more of a New York Steinway than it does a Busendorfer. But nonetheless, Korg calls it an Austrian Grand, which I have to imagine could be none other than Busendorfer. So we're going to compare the Austrian Grand of the SV2 to the Austrian Grand of the uh, the P515, the Busendorfer sample, and we'll see how those compare. I think what I'm going to do is play, I could play Debussy. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Last time I played the P515, I played a certain piece that many of you guys liked on the Busendorfer that brought out all the qualities about it I love. So I'm going to do that same piece on here. If you guys know what it is, let me know down in the comment section below. Some, some of you will recognize it, and I'll go back and forth between the two, and we'll see what the differences are. Why is it that such a simple piano song from a simple block game makes such a phenomenal piano test piece? For some time I've been struggling to figure out what it was exactly that I that was missing on the SV2 piano samples, and I've been struggling to find a piece and find a scenario that really shows it off, and I did it just now. That piece is perfect, and the P515 is a perfect example of how to do an acoustic piano sample versus the SV2 piano samples. Now, what you should have been listening there for, and if you missed it, go back and listen again, is the way the melody is able to sing out and sustain over the chords I'm playing in the left hand. And I might even play it again here because, hey, I like playing that piece. Um, the right hand and the melody of especially the Busendorfer sample, but the CFX as well, but it's more prominent with the Busendorfer, is able to sing out and sustain. Listen to the sustain you're able to get on those melody notes. Whereas down here on the SV2, it's really weird because if you push a single note or play a single chord and listen to it decay, it sounds normal. But when you're actually using it in music, for example, that piece, it just, the right hand seems to decay away very quickly. Let me play it again, like I said I would, and I won't play the full thing, I'll just play the first few seconds, but I'll do the first few seconds down here and the first few seconds on here, and pay attention to that right hand. Listen to how much it sings and sustains and how long you can hear it over the left hand than you can on the SV2. Have a listen.
So clearly you can tell there's a massive difference between the Austrian Grand of the SV2 and the Busendorfer Grand of the P515. That right hand just sings out so much longer and clearer on the P515 than it does down here on the SV2, and I think that's probably the biggest problem with the SV2's piano samples. Now, I mentioned that they were mellow and warm, and they might not punch through the mix very well, so then, of course, there's the built-in EQ that you can bring a bit more life into the instruments with, but that doesn't fix the strange sustain phenomenon, and I'm not exactly sure what would, so that's probably the biggest issue I have with the Korg SV2, to be honest with you. And in the grand scheme of things, honestly, that's a pretty small issue. That's the biggest thing I can think of with the SV2 that I dislike, and it's still pretty small. They're still definitely usable. They're just not as good as on the P515. Now, before I move on to the electric pianos category, which I'm sure is the what everyone's been waiting for, because it's kind of the calling card of the SV1, I mean, the SV2 and the SV1, I wanted to talk about the a couple of things regarding these two instruments, and the first one is the speakers. Now, the SV2S comes with speakers. That's what that second S stands for, and the P515 comes with speakers by default. Whether you get the white P515 or the black P515, they both come with speakers. The SV2S is the only SV2 variant that comes with the speakers, and I do have to say, while I initially did like the speakers of the SV2, and compared to the ES8, they also held their own. Compared to the P515, I definitely do hear a big, big difference. I said from the very beginning that the speakers were cutting off some of the high frequencies and the low frequencies of the music that you play, and that's most prominent with the P515, because it's got some pretty decent speakers in here. They're very loud, they're very powerful, and they have lots and lots of bass, and they have some piercing high trebles when they need to. The speakers of the SV2 are adequate, and by itself, when I get used to it, they do work okay, but I do have to say the speakers of the P515 are much better. I can't necessarily say the speakers are a flaw of the SV2, because they do work and they do the job, but at the same time, they're a lot better on the P515, so I'm not sure exactly what I think of that yet, but they do their job, and honestly, they look really cool, and I think that's part of the thing that makes me like them on the SV2. They have that really unique speaker grill that I've showed off in the other videos that's pretty iconic already, so that alone makes the SV2 speakers pretty cool, but they definitely are better on the P515. The final thing I wanted to talk about here while we're on the piano tones and moving on to electric piano tones is the feel of the action. Let me turn the volumes down so I can play the actions without making noise. Um, the feel of both of these is honestly, at this point, in my opinion, two of the best digital piano actions that money can buy. I haven't played every single digital piano, and there's still a few that may be better, I don't know. But so far from what I've played, the NWX action used up here in the P515 and the RH3 action from Korg used in the SV2 are two of the best digital piano actions on the market today. And at this point between these two, which one is better? I've got to be honest, I think at this point they're so close that it probably would honestly be a bit subjective, and it would depend more on what you're looking for rather than the A action is distinguishably better than B action. I like them both. They're both very playable. The action of the P515, and this here's a fact, the action of the P515 is noticeably heavier than the action of the SV1. Um, I haven't gotten my gram weights out to test that yet, and some of you probably will want me to, but the action of the P515 is distinguishably heavier than the SV2, and that I think will be a future video idea, comparing the gram weights between the higher end tiers of pianos. Um, but I'll save that for that later video. Um, but obviously the action is heavier, and what this creates is a more is a different playing experience. It doesn't create a worse playing experience, in my opinion, but if you do have hand conditions that make it difficult to play a heavy action, the P515 probably won't be the best op option for you. However, if you are looking for an instrument that will be a good stepping stone from playing a digital piano to playing an acoustic piano, while both of these would be good, I think for many people the P515 might be the better option between the two. There, I think, would be a bit less transition time from playing this to playing a real acoustic piano than there would be from playing playing this to playing a real acoustic piano. However, neither of these have any major flaws when it comes to the action, and they both do just about everything perfectly fine. I feel like the action, even though it's heavier, the action of the P515 repeats better and is way better for doing trills than down here on the SV2. It's just something about it's a little bit clunkier and uneven when you're doing those 
specific maneuvers. Turns, trills, other such ornaments you'd find in Baroque and classical music can be a little clumsy feeling on the SV2 compared to the uh, P515. It's a bit more crisp up here on the P515, but for just about everything else, including most advanced classical music, the RA3 action won't give you any problems at all. I've played Beethoven on here, the third movement of Moonlight Sonata. I've played Chopin. I've played the Pirates of the Caribbean theme and practiced that on here a couple years ago on my original SV1 that used the same action and had no problems whatsoever. So I think the P515 is a shade more piano-like, but between the two, it honestly, I think, would be a bit subjective. If you want a lighter, more all-round feeling action, you know, an action that's good for playing everything, the SV2 would work just fine. If you're looking to be more of a piano-focused musician and you're looking for a more piano-like experience that's focused more on playing classical music than rock, pop, and jazz, the P515 might be the better option for you. Honestly, though, I like both of these actions and I think they're both pretty strong contenders. Now I think it's finally time to move on to the electric piano category, which is where things get interesting once again. The sounds of the P515, you might expect, wouldn't be amazing when it comes to the electric pianos, like the Rhodes and the Wurlitzer, but they're actually pretty decent and surprisingly good sounding. The Korg SV2 has 24, well not 24 exactly, but it has 24 different electric piano variants, probably around like, I don't know, 16 different, um, or at least eight different road sounds, and probably a few others when you count the ones that are layered with strings and stuff. So there's a, a big variety of road sounds down here of the SV2. So the one I choose may or may not necessarily match up exactly with the one that's up here on the Yamaha P515. But what I'm going to do is select one. I think I'm going to try out sounds number two of the SV2 and play that versus the stage E piano of the P515. It might not be a perfect match, and if it's not, I might change it and tweak it of the SV2 to try to match it to the sound of the P515. But without any further ado, let me play my Rhodes test piece, which, some, which one of my followers has named Riders on the Demonetization Storm, and I love that name. It makes me want to come up with a bigger, fuller, uh, longer version of it because that is a fantastic, fantastic name. Thank you for that name suggestion. I love it. Those two think are a pretty close match, and which one do I like more? Well, honestly, they're both pretty good. The Yamaha's definitely does sound like a Fender Rhodes, has some interesting artifacts that I think might not necessarily be found in every single Fender Rhodes, like mine doesn't have the high jingly partials in the low bass like this one does, but it's still very nice to listen to. Between the two, though, I think the SV2 honestly has to win for the Rhodes sounds of compared to the P515 simply because of the customization you have down here. There's also a number of different flavors and sounds of various SV1 road sounds down here. That's not the only one. That's just the one I chose because I think it matches relatively closely to the P515. But there's a number of different things you can do to the sounds of the SV1, like I mentioned earlier. You can EQ it. You can put effects on it. You can run it through a uh, amp simulator. You can change the touch sensitivity. You can also modulate it further with a phaser or a chorus. And finally, you can change it with a uh, reverb or an echo or some sort of other type of delay. So there's a number of different things you can really easily do with the SV2 that you aren't able to do, at least directly through the instrument of the P515. And I think that alone makes the SV2 be a better instrument for that type of music than the P515. I'm not really knocking the P515 though, because that is a pretty good Fender Rhodes sound, and, but like I said, it is a more piano-focused instrument. It just has these in there in case you need one on a gig or you want to mess around with those type of sounds. I'll give you a couple of other different flavors of SV1, or SV2, I keep calling the SV1, I'm sorry about that. The SV2 road sounds down here, I'll just scroll through a couple of them and play them and compare them against that same stage EP. Maybe I'll find one that I think mirrors the P515 a little better. Thank you. 
I actually think that third sound there matches the P505 a little better than the second one does, but that's still a little flavor of the different Rhodes sounds of the Korg SV2. Now I think let's check out the second sound of the P515, which is a DXE piano. The Korg SV2 has a couple of different variants of those, and let's check those out as well. So there's a few different DX style sounds of the Korg SV2, two of them are layered with the synth pad and two of them are just by themselves. Between the two, I like the ones of the Korg SV2 more, they're clean and pure sounding, whereas the one of the, the Yamaha is a bit more muddy and complex sounding. I like the sound of the ones on the SV2 more. Up next is a vintage EP on the P515, which is meant to emulate a World Sir 200. What I'm going to do is select sound 6B down here in the Korg, turn off the chorus, turn off the amp sim's not on. I think that's all I need to turn on. Um, and then we will get a pretty close match to the sound of that of the Yamaha. Let's see which one sounds better. Once again, between the two, I like the Korg SV2 more. The one on the Yamaha isn't bad, but the SV2 just has this more authentic sound to it that really makes it cool. If you go to the touch, touch sensitivity, you can increase the brightness and make the SV2 even more punchy as well, which I think would have matched the P515 even better, because the P515 did have a bit of a brighter tone, at least to me. Um, but that is the one of the four different Whirly sounds on the Korg SV2, and I think they're all pretty decent. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, though, is even though I I don't like the whirly sound of the 515 as much as on the uh, Korg. I did, I was messing around off camera earlier and I found uh, that it works actually pretty good in conjunction with the Korg SV2. I forget exactly what I was doing, uh, but I think I was doing the one of the DX sounds down here on the SV2 in combo with the whirly sound up here and I thought it sounded cool at the time. Let's see if I can figure out what I was doing then and we'll see what I think now. Thank you. 
Just some simple two chord improv that I thought sounded pretty good. The vintage EP, the whirly sound of the P5 and 5, has a simpler, cleaner, more basic tone than the whirlies of the SV2, but because of that, it makes a pretty good mix with some of the sounds of the whirly. I thought that sounded pretty nice, at least to me. The sound combo was pretty cool. Up next on the P515, we have a soft EP, which has a gentle, subtle auto pan. It's kind of a warmer, more mellow version of the first road sound we had before. Down here on the SV2, we can also apply a tremolo, which is actually an auto pan. I'm not sure why it's not just called auto pan, but it's, it is an auto pan, but they labeled the tremolo. Uh, let's l put that on one of the uh, the road sounds down here and see how they compare. I'll use the first road sound down here because it's pretty mellow and so is this and I'll tweak the auto pan to get it to be similar to the one up here on the Yamaha. Like I said about the P5 and 5 being more oriented for for classical music, playing that little extra to Schubert felt a bit more comfortable of the on the P5 and 5 than it did of the SV2. The, playing the complicated notes all close to each other and going back and forth was just a bit more clumsy of the SV2. But for virtually everything else you want to play on the SV2, it works really, really fine. The NWX action is just some serious competition for the RH3. Uh, let's scroll through here. Up next on the P5 and 5, there is a Rhodes with a phaser on it, which I do not believe you can alter, at least through the instrument itself. But of course, you can down here on the Korg. So let me play with the phasers a little bit and see if I can match the sound of the phaser on the P5 and 5. One thing I do want to mention about the auto pan, though, is on that uh, soft EP, it's a very subtle auto pan that slowly fades back and forth. And down here on the Korg, it's more of a snappy auto pan that tends to kind of just flip between the two channels. So that is one thing I noticed. But let's try out the phaser now and see how that goes. So that was the Phaser EP of the P515 compared to just the first Fender Rhodes with a Phaser applied. I actually got them to sound pretty similar, at least to me. There's two different Phasers, though, and you can change the speed and intensity just on the fly as you want, which is really wonderful. The uh, first, the EP sound I chose down here on the SV2 had more of a fat tone in the treble than the P515 did, but it was still kind of a cool comparison. I think this video is getting kind of long now, so, so I think I'll skip past the DX Bright sound and the tremolo vintage uh, up here on the P515. The tremolo vintage is just the whirly with an auto pan or a tremolo applied to it. And let's move on now to the jazz organ slow.
on the P515. This obviously is an organ, and obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but it is emulating a tone wheel organ. An interesting difference here between the two is that, first of all, there's less volume differences between the P515 and the SV2. I have to turn the SV2 down on the organ sounds quite a bit to get them to be in line with everything else. The organ sounds of the P515 are a bit louder, and they do sound more full because they're organs, um, but they're not as loud as on the SV2. So hopefully they'll be somewhat within tolerance and one won't be radically louder than the other, but here's the jazz organ slow on the, uh, the P5 and 5, and here's the default organ of the SV2. <laughs> I like the sound of it down there on the SV2 a bit more. One of the things I definitely wanted to talk about, though, between the two of them is the sound of the pipe organs, because they're actually both really good on both of them. For a long time, I thought Yamaha was really the only, like, mainstream um, piano keyboard maker that had really good pipe organ sounds, but Corey actually has some decent ones down here, too. So let's listen to the principal organ sound, the flute-style organ, and then also the full pipe organ for both of these. The flute sound, the principal sound of the SV2 is a very mellow, very toned down sound, and I think it was a bit quieter than the Yamaha sound, which is a bit more of a bold flute organ sound. And the full organ sound is also radically different of the two. The P515 has a very solid sound, whereas the Korg has, is going for a bit of a more shrill sound, but especially with the... Um, the, the full organ sound of both of them, they both have their, str their strong points and their weaknesses. The strong point of the Korg is the realism in the low bass. It actually sounds like they've incorporated the sound of a 32-foot organ pipe, whereas with the Yamaha, it doesn't. Have a listen. As you can hear, there definitely is a difference in the bass of the SV2 versus the Yamaha P5 and 5, and honestly, they work pretty well together also as like a double manual system. The the main issue with the main organ sound, the full organ sound of the SV2, though, is that it doesn't work well with staccato notes, whereas the full organ sound of the Yamaha works perfectly for staccato notes. Check, the, check this out. So they both have their strong points and they both have their weaknesses. Overall, I think the Yamaha's one is a little bit more versatile and does is better for general music for the organ sound, but I like certain aspects of the Korg SV2 as well for the pipe organ sound. 
There's also a few other sounds in here that I've skipped over. There's the clavinet sound up here of the uh, Yamaha P515, which is actually pretty decent. The SV1, though, I mean, the SV2, sorry, has four different clavinet sounds. The Yamaha only has one, so I think the SV2 kind of wins there. All four of them sound pretty good on the SV2, and Yamaha's isn't bad either. And for the strings sound and orchestral music, I think the SV2 also wins, oddly enough. Some of the orchestral sounds in here are really strong. You wouldn't think it would be for a piano that's emulating a Fender Rhodes and Wurlitzer, and that's its main selling point, but it still has really amazing symphonic effects. Check this out. The SV2 can, cool, can do cool things like that that really sound amazing. I can also do cool things like this, which the P5 and 5 unfortunately cannot do. So that, I think, pretty much wraps up the basic review of the Korg SV2 versus the P515. So let me give you a bit of a recap and a wrap-up for the video. The Yamaha P515 is a really, really wonderful instrument to play, especially when it comes to the piano sounds, which is its main point. The idea of the P515 is a good practice piano instrument, and it really, really exceeds at that. The CFX sample and the Bruce River sample are phenomenal, and many of the other samples of the P515 as well, like the Fender Rhodes and the World and some of the additional sounds that not everyone might want to use, even those still are really great. And overall, it's a solid, well-built digital piano that will last you many, many years. The Korg SV2 also does many of the same things. It has electric pianos, it has acoustic pianos, and it's also a pretty solidly built instrument that probably, with well with good care will also probably i'm hoping last you many many years i don't know that for a fact but my sv1 lasted me a long time and hopefully the sv2 will as well but the acoustic pianos are definitely a lot weaker on the sv2 than they are on the p515 and the sv2 and the p515 are definitely sect marketed towards different sectors of the piano market if you're looking for a digital piano that's a lot of fun to play with funky jazz music and rock and pop and that sort of genres and you want to play with fender roads and and Wurlitzer 200s and vintage piano sounds, the SV2 really can't be beat. There's virtually nothing like it on the market. There's a couple of other similar types of instruments, but there are, those are much harder to get a hold of than the SV2, which is why I haven't reviewed those yet. Um, but the SV2 is really, really phenomenal for certain types of things. But if you're looking for a digital piano that has really phenomenal built-in speakers, really phenomenal acoustic piano samples, and a very, very piano-like action under $2,000, at least here in the States, the P515 also can't be beat. It's really, really fantastic. I mean, there's a couple of others that are very good as well. The Kawhi ES8 is also another good option for good piano samples, but the action of the P515, I think, is more piano-like and more pleasant to play. However, both of these S these instruments, while they do have their small weaknesses and they both do have their small positives, are absolutely fantastic to play, and I love them both, probably equally for different things. The SV2 is great for the vintage style sounds and the Yamaha P515 is phenomenal for the piano type sounds. And honestly, I love them both. I don't really know if I have a favorite. I mean, I guess I like the SV2 more. The SV2 is more fun to play. Um, you can just mess around with it and change the sounds and alter them and save the favorites and come up with all the different own registrations, which you can't quite do on the P515. But the P515 is a more serious instrument meant for practicing and the SV2 is a more fun instrument meant for performing. I think that's the big takeaway from the video. If you're looking for a cool performance keyboard, the SV2 might be a good option. If you're looking for a better practice instrument that's a really, really fantastic instrument, the P515 is a very good choice. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this review of the SV2 versus the Yamaha P515. Uh, if you did, you might want to go check out my channel if you're new. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, digital pianos, acoustic pianos, and all kinds of other cool stuff too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to go check out my channel. And if you do that, thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.